Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Shows Marketing. Today, we're jumping into more FTP skies. And today, we're going to be diving into the Forcecraft mod. Yes, it is the mod where the backpack looks like a Among Us character. And also, uh, there's some shears that can shear pigs. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys are ready. By the way, guys, it is World Download Day. So if you're a supporter of any tier, be sure to get your World Download. Of course, they're always posted on Discord. Not only do you get access to this World Download, but all of my prior World Downloads since I have been doing them. Uh, they're all listed on the Discord. So no matter which way you're supporting, uh, be sure to check that out and get your World Download today. So today we get started with something very, very special. And that is gonna be the Forcecraft mod. So later on down the road, we are going to actually need this thing called a time torch. We're gonna need eight of them actually. And if I remember correctly, the time torch actually accelerates tick speeds of things that are around you uh, that are affected by them, such as mobs and, and entities and, uh, and crops and things like that. Uh, I believe the time torch can kind of accelerate it similar to the Project E Watch of Flowing Time. Um, now, to get this from Forcecraft, we are going to need to have a Force Infuser that is at least level 6. Now, this takes a little bit of time and patience. Now, you may have looked at Forcecraft and you were like, just like me, when I in initially seen this, and I was like, what is this? It's just a bunch of yellow stuff. But in reality, there's a lot of really cool utility things that we could have used early on, um, but I am not crazy familiar with Forcecraft. Uh, this was before my era of getting into modded Minecraft, so knowing or knowing this mod, I, I don't know too much about it, other than things I've used in a prior pack. Um, and, uh, well, I do know like things like the Baconator, that's a way to eat. You can also pick up mobs inside the flasks. That's a cool way to pick up mobs. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot I really understand about this. Um, and then the shears are kind of cool. Uh, we can actually use shears. I don't know if I have a pig spawn egg, but you can use shears to literally shear a pig. Um, I know that it's, it's just as weird as, as I, it sounded weird coming out of my mouth. Now you may notice that there's not really a guide or anything like that built in uh, to the questing system for Forcecraft. It's just really kind of put here last minute uh, and uh, doesn't really give much explanation on how to do it. Well, this is going to become your best friend, Force and you. Thankfully, we do get force gems, so it's not something that we have to go after or collect a whole lot of. Uh, this book is going to really be your friend. Um, and all of these things uh, that it talks about on the first sort of page are going to be things that you're going to want to make, especially the infuser here. So we are going to need a force rod, which means we are going to need some saplings. Now, you can craft force saplings with force gems, and that's how you're going to get that, and you're gonna get logs. I used it already to decorate this little corner. This mod is not gonna require a lot of space, um, to, to be fair. Uh, it's, it's literally a single block, like the big, the one thing you're gonna be using the most is this force infuser itself. Um, so, with that in mind, this force rod requires a force nugget, and force gems can be made this way. Let's go ahead and make the nuggets, it's using iron. And the, let's make the rod. So the rod is going to be used for a lot of different crafts. Um, so, and it has a durability of 75. Oh, nice. I think we have everything for that. There we go. So force infuser, right? Uh, that's sort of the big part of this. Um, and we're going to fill this with force gems and that will turn into liquid force. But there's a book slot up here and it explains a little bit about this book. Um, but this book is sort of uh, how you keep and learn and get knowledge. So the more th the more you use this, oh, I guess it consumed the whole rod. Oh no, no, it didn't. Uh, we need a book. So the more crafts you do uh, that we're gonna work on here in a moment, the higher level this will get. And this is how we're going to be affecting what tier and what level our actual crafter is. Because right now we can't just craft a time torch. No, no, no. We have to level up our tome. Now with that crafted in, we have tier zero infusions, and these are things that we can actually use. So we can use a claw, and then we have force nuggets. Now, this right here comes from a bat, and we don't have bats spawning right now. Uh, not a lot of them anyways. I've seen a couple, and that's why I have one in my inventory. 
So I'm going to get a mob imprisonment tool and we need to capture a pat. Thankfully, they do spawn under the base. And thankfully, there was one down here. Thankfully, they uh, they, they do spawn down here every now and then. Uh, but catching one, that's going to be a little bit harder. There we go. So I now have this bat in this mob imprisonment tool. And I want to get this thing spawned in. And so what we need to do is we need to probably do this in the nether. So let's set up this mob duplicator. It's actually going to be quite simple. I'm going to be using ethereal glass. This allows me to walk through, but mobs cannot, uh, which is going to be super helpful for keep keeping the bats locked in here. We don't want the bats getting out. Now, it doesn't make it dark in here, and we don't really need it to be dark. This is going to be a mob duplicator, which is how we're going to be spawning our mobs. Um, I am going to place this right here. Mob duplicator can go right there. No big deal. And let's see, we can go ahead and break that. Uh, on the top, I'm going to be putting the ender tank. And this ender tank has essence in it. And so when I switch that over, as you can see, that's going to flow in. And uh, we also want a lever. I feel like this is super important for things like this. Um, we want this to be on with redstone signal. So run with a redstone signal. And then, of course, we can turn it off to flip it up. That's just how American light switches work, and uh, I, I'm just used to that. Uh, off is up, and on is down. Um, so, as far as putting the item in, we can go ahead and do that here in a second. Let's get our power, and we'll just send that right here. So, power main is what we're going to be hooking to. And then we put this in, and it'll, it should start spawning bats once we give it a redstone signal. So, that's going to go down without any upgrades in it. It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but I do actually want to kill these things with this sword, because if we can get a loot pinata or something like that, we might have the chance of getting a spawn egg, and then we don't have to use a setup at all. We can use an apotheosis spawner. So if I can get lucky and get an actual spawn egg from this, then we'll be golden. So I just had a loot pinata happen. I went from like 15 to 55 but still have yet to get a spawn egg from this. The loot pinata is kind of crazy. It'll it'll like proc an explosion that'll happen. And it's really loud. It's like TNT going off. But it's it's going to drop anything that it had actually was going to drop already. It like multiplies it by a lot. Um, like earlier, I got a ton of apotheosis. Um, uh, these things. I got a bunch of gems. Yeah, gems of a combatant. Look, we have 21 of them. Of the same one because it came off of a mob that I ended up killing in this dimension. So kind of ridiculous. I definitely recommend if you can put that on, like if you can roll that, roll it. It is so worth it. Also, I keep forgetting that this can actually go on the floor. You can see where its spawn is. You can actually put it in the ground and uh, it'll spawn everything like right uh, one block above, giving you a, a space to have a have this covered. Um, I, I keep forgetting. I, I thought that before it was around this block, but no. Uh, so if you put a range of greed on this, keep in mind it's going to spawn things in the top unless you put it on the ground. So even after killing as many as I did, I didn't manage to get the spawn egg for it. But I think this is going to be plenty of claws to get us where we need to go. Now let's get back into this and get this stuff set up. So let's make a force engine. I know we have unlimited power, but the force engine is how you would actually generate power from within this mod. Um, and uh, it does look kind of nice, and it can go underneath your infusion table. So, right there, and it looks like we can put force in, and that should start to generate power for our force table, right? Or at least I, I think so. Uh, does this take water over here? Let's see, let's try a bucket of water. I bet it does. And now is it generating? Huh. Apparently, we need a lever to activate it. So I think we have it set up correctly, uh, but we do need to activate it down below. I wonder. Okay, so we're good. We can we can do that. Now it has been activated, and is it going to be generating? Hmm. I think I found the problem, <laughs> and I don't think we need water at all. So we can take the force. Let's just put this on top just directly and the, it outputs only on the one side. You still need a lever and we put the force in 
And we could do water. But I don't think it needs water to generate. And there it goes. I don't even, I don't think it consumes it either. And we flip this. It does consume the water, but it doesn't necessarily need it. And it's going to start to generate. And I love how it goes from the top down. That's, that's funny. So now that we have power on our force infuser, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. We just need to read what the book says. And the book tells us a lot here on tier zero infusions. Infusions that can be executed, and it says to complete all tier zero infusions to upgrade your tome to the next tier, which is going to be two in total. So we need to do the claw, and then we also need a force nugget. So thankfully we got all the claws we need. Now I made a trash can just for this particular thing, uh, because I don't really need these swords. So let's put our book in here, it has to be in here for it to work. And when we put this in here, we have a button and we hit infuse and there we go. So that put knockback on there. And I believe this will put a level of sharpness on there if we do this. And there we go. And as you can see, it says tier zero, two of two. Um, but we should be able to, I think we have to level this again to get it past that particular point. And you see next tier, it says 21. So yes, this is why I'm going to be scrapping these swords. So yes, to get it to the next level, we have to just do multiples of these. Um, we can do swords, we can do other materials, but none of these materials are going to be super useful to me at the moment. So I'm just basically making stuff just so I can get that level up, which is, I mean, it, it's fine. Early on, this would be pretty straightforward. And there we go. So now we're on tier one and it says our next tier is going to be, uh, it's going to take 96 points, I believe. Force points is what it talks about. But there we go. So we unlocked a new chapter, a dawning of a new age. And uh, that means on tier one infusions, we have these to worry about. So we have a gold uh, power source right here, golden power source and a lumberjack and speed. And then uh, to complete all tier one infusions to upgrade your tome to the next tier. Um, so yes, we've unlocked more things, infusions such as this now, and tells us what we can put on there. So There's going to be a lot of infusions, a lot of doing this over and over again, until we get to the level that we need to be able to work on other things. So I think to get to the next tier, I will be doing sugar infusions. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be kind of quick. So we just do the tools. We'll get through this pretty quickly with like three or four of these. Now on the book, however, I may have all the points done for the next tier, but I still have to do all of the upgrades that are available in this tier. Honestly, I have to admit, this is a pretty cool infusion right here. Putting a log on your force axe gives you a lumberjack. And if we take this and some bone mill, we can chop an entire tree down. We, I know we have vein miner, but this is still pretty cool, right? Without using Vein Miner, I can chop this whole tree down. And it's really fast. And this is something that you can make quite early, uh, especially in this pack. Now to get that other component that we're gonna need, we're gonna have to speed this up a little bit. Go ahead and get that done. And that gives us the golden power source right there from Forcecraft. But that's of course going to be used to upgrade and get us into the next tier. So force tools and we put it on armor. So we should be able to put it on a pick. And I wonder if this gives it auto smelt. Ooh, that one takes a little bit longer. Yep, it gives it heat. And I would assume that that would allow us to uh, to auto smelt. Uh, for example, stone. Is it sort of like a silk touch for stone? If we mine that, what do we get? We get stone back. Exactly like you would think. And now we're getting to tier two. Keep in mind that we got to get to tier six um, of infusion in order to be able to make that torch. Um, but things are going to get more and more interesting and as we go. So tier two infusions, experience core, experience tome, freezing, freezing core. All of these individual things are going to have to be used on some sort of tool uh, in order for us to progress to the next tier. First couple things we're going to need to make in order to do this is going to be a book and an enchanted bottle. This is going to make a experience tome, um, but we need to use this to upgrade other things. Um, so inside of our book, it talks about experience cores 
And that's what we're going to need. Uh, so core, these guys right here, require this book, and which we do have, and we also have the wand as well. Um, and uh, we're supposed to be able to put these together. However, I wonder if this has to be a full experience book. I wonder how much this actually holds. Oh, this holds, <laughs> this holds an infinite amount of experience. Uh, okay, so it's definitely not till it's filled. Wow. I guess you just have to have a little bit in it. Oh, and then it just converts the amount of XP that you put into it into a core. Ah. And then we should be able to upgrade this with a bottle of enchanting. And that is another infusion that will give us an experience core. It's funny that this is called Snow Cookie, but that's what we're going to be using. We need two of these, I think. Um, and then we'll use this on a force core. And then we also need to put this on a bow. So we should be able to put this on a bow. And also put this on a upgrade core. And that will give us a freezing core. And then our bow also has freezing on it. And then we have a grinding core. There we go. You know what? I kind of like this system because I, I've never really played with this before. Um, but what it really does is it, it does force you to learn every part of the mod. And it, it really does teach you what all of these individual parts do because you have to craft them in order to be able to make any of the later game stuff. The only problem with doing that is once you've done it one time and you understand the process, well, then it becomes a monotonous task each time this is in a pack and you have to do that. But at first, it's really, really good. Now, uh, there is an upgrade for the force pack. Uh, the force pack is a backpack that we have used <laughs> that um, has a default of eight slots, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we can now upgrade that now that we're on this tier of infusion. And now it has 16 slots. I'm sure it's going to get higher as we go. Now, you can craft yourself a fortune cookie. And this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, and whenever you open it up, well, or eat it, I mean, you get a fortune. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you can take this fortune and use it to infuse onto something like a bow. I wonder if we can take an already infused bow and add it. We cannot, but it looks like um, somehow you can, you can infuse. So let's go ahead and put this and put something on a new bow. And then we got luck one. So that's pretty, pretty nifty. Um, and then we also need blue dye. And that should be about it for this tier outside of just infusing until we get more done um this goes on shears so force shears which we already have some uh we can put blue dye on and what is this going to infuse this gives us rainbow capable of shearing is this does this allow us to shear sheep and it'll be a random wool color each time i've got to test this out oh my gosh it does on force shears randomly colors wool dropped from shearing sheep. That is fabulous. Now our last infusion that we're gonna have to do before just of course leveling up is making a speed core. And I believe these are used in the force machines. Um, but there we go. We're now on tier three. So all of the next tier is actually pretty cool. We have this, uh, if you put in potions of invisibility, you can uh, imbue that on your armor and make your armor actually invisible which is kind of cool, showing the player's skin instead of the armor. And then a force rod apparently imbues it with invisibility. I'm not quite sure unless that just gives you invisibility. Uh, I do have the potion over here made up. And infuse. So it has invisibility. It just says camo. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have this, which uh, putting an arrow on here. That is going to give us bleeding which you might know what that is. Of course, then we can upgrade to 24 slots on our bag. And then this is a really cool one. We can put Silk Touch, so long as you have cobwebs anyways. Pretty nice. And that unlocks tier four for us already. We're getting to tier four. Now, the next set of infusions are pretty well straightforward. We have the Spider Eye. That's going to give this Bane, which is Bane of Anthropods, of course. Um, and then we have a upgrade core that is going to be... Boop, a heat core. Uh, and then of course, another force pack upgrade on this tier. And that is everything that <laughs> leads us now into tier five. Uh, and tier five, wow, 
uh, only has three more things as well. And we get to upgrade the force pack even more. So this sounds pretty fun. I want to test this out. A feather is going to allow us to take some durability and apparently use this to propel us forward. How cool is that, man? That's, that's pretty nifty to have on a sword. It uses a little bit of the durability and has a cooldown, but to be able to travel with it? Man, when, if, if I see Forcecraft in another, another pack I'm playing, I'm definitely going to be using this early on. Next, of course, is another Force pack upgrade. Now having 40 slots, getting a little bit bigger. Uh, and then we have a Force Rod with a gas tier. And this is going to imbue healing one. And I think it says up to healing two. Okay, so we shift right click or just right click? No, we just right click. And I guess it applies the healing effect. We cannot be touching anything with it. So open air, it works. Very cool. And with that, we are now into tier six, which is where we need to be to make these force torches that we're actually going to need later on. So uh, it looks like we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be able to increase the durability of our tools, making our tools a little bit nicer. This is max level three, so we can imbue this, looks like multiple times. The ender, so this is a force rod, um, allowing it to be used as a teleportation device. So now the rod can throw ender pearls for us and also do the same thing with a force sword and or a bow. And then of course the time, which is the force torch, imbues the torch with time, converting it to a time torch. If you're unable to execute it in a fusion. It means the recipe has been disabled in the configs, but apparently it's not disabled in this pack. Uh, so we should have access to it. Um, now let's take a look. There's not a torch, right? Is there a force torch? We'll be making a force torch. So we need logs from this mod. A couple of logs. Uh, we actually need 10 for this whole thing to, to take place. So let's grab our ax because that was incredibly fast and efficient at breaking. And bone mill this. Like we got a ton of that out of there. Like that, it also, it like, it broke the logs really fast. Like I don't think I have anything benefiting me there I always do that yeah no that it just breaks the logs really fast that is awesome um so let's take our logs and uh we can go ahead and uh and turn these into torches nine of them that will turn into torches so of course for this we are going to make at least 10 uh so we put this in there one at a time with that and we start the infusion and this will make a time torch. Now, uh, before we make any more, let's see what this thing actually does. Um, and I think the best place to test this out is going to have to be in the nether. So now I believe this has the ability to speed up this dirt that's in there. If I remember correctly, um, it might work, but it's supposed to speed things up. Um, it might even speed up. I, actually, it might be better to test. I don't know if it speeds up machines, but it should speed up crop growth and things like that. So it does look like it works. So if we keep an eye out on the rate that which this is going, and then we put a time torch, it did make this go a little bit faster, or I could just be losing my marbles. But it's not disabled. I check the config, and... Uh, it just doesn't seem like the rate at which it's doing any speeding up is that high. So there's another time torch. I, 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 it doesn't really give a good description. So judging by the looks of things, testing it on all kinds of stuff, doesn't really seem like the time torch is implemented, but what it was supposed to be like is uh, sort of like a time accelerator that's supposed to accelerate uh, items or entities around it. Um, and uh, well, that's kind of a bummer, but it's at least we have the thing that we're going to need to end up completing the pack. So I'm still going to need 10 of them. Now, there we have it. Our last time torch that we're going to need for that quest. Uh, I know it's in the future, but, you know, I wanted to get it done now and also play around with a little bit more Forcecraft stuff. Uh, now, there's still a few things that I have left to do. We still have even a higher infusions, technically. And so I'm going to get the rest of these infusions done and we should be moving into the next tier. Now, the last couple infusions are kind of interesting. This treasure core requires another star, but what it's supposed to do is when we kill a mob with it, it has a chance of dropping 
a card from this mod. Uh, these cards right here. So a life card, a darkness card, or an undead card. And those can be used to craft bags of spoils. Um, and then this right here will give mobs glowing when they're hit. So that is the chapter seven. And I think that is it. We have now mastered infusion. Um, now here's the thing the, here's like my takeaway on this. Um, I'm not quite sure why we can't have multiple infusions, but I guess we are going with like, it's we're meant to sort of pick and choose, right? Now I do want to take this sword and I want to try and kill some of those bats and see if we can't get some of them cards. I'm going to guess that maybe bats don't work. So I'm going to try and do it this way. Ooh, there's a, there's a boss boy over there and maybe killing him with this thing will help. By the way, our strength five is honestly what allows us to kill these guys so fast. Hopefully we'll be able to get some treasure cards from this though. There's one. So there we go. After running around for a little while, I managed to get four of these cards. Um, and uh, I guess these cards are just used to make the spoils bags. So I'm going to put that together. And I think this one makes the high tier spoils bags. So let's do this. And what could possibly be in these bags? Y you've got to be kidding me. Well, I mean, at least we can get these out of the bags, but wow. <laughs> All of that for, yep, yeah, for that spoils bag. Now, I think from just killing mobs on their own, I've gotten a bunch of tier one spoils bags. Um, and uh, all of these have some really useful items in them. And I think these come from just regular mob farms. So you don't really need all of that stuff from Forcecraft. You can literally just do this. And I don't, I don't know. Is there a chest? Can we just right click this onto a chest to dump the bag? Yes. You can just right click onto a chest. Shift right click to dump the bags. Oh, wow. There's a lot of cool things we actually get from this. So, I mean, all in all, this is kind of interesting. All of the stuff it gives you, even artifacts somehow, it dropped. Um, this seems like a lot of the dungeon loot, uh, at least the same sort of loot pool. We got all of the, the cubes, g the chorus fruit. Like, I wish I would have known this earlier. All of the different uh, armor, <laughs> which is important. Um, yeah, it just seems like a bunch of this fortune cookies and things like that. A lot of Lexica Batanias. And we even got a Baconator, which would allow us to eat automatically. Some speed cores and a lot of schematics from Tetra. Now, I know today's episode wasn't as jam-packed uh, with uh, adventure as normal uh, because we kind of were just stuck in one machine. But that that's kind of Forcecraft. It does have a lot of interesting outside mechanics, like you can bottle a wither and do things like that. Um, and outside of the cool things with the shears, you can shear multiple mobs. It's more or less like a, uh, a compact... I don't know what you would really call it. It's definitely a quality of life sort of mod kind of wrapped in a, in an odd package. Um, but of course it's, it's, it's always going to have that place in my heart. It's uh, and a lot of other people who use this when uh, modding was uh, very early on, early on, but guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button, especially if you learned something new today. And uh, of course, guys, while you're uh, clicking that like button and subscribing, might as well comment down below. Uh, what's something interesting about Forcecraft that you know about that I may have not covered in today's episode? Uh, let me know down in the comments below because I would love to learn myself. And of course, guys, well, it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to HT Habrav only. Thank you so much for your amazing support. By the way, over on YouTube, becoming a YouTube premium member. And if you guys would like to support as well in that same way, all you gotta do is check out the join button next to the subscribe button. And uh, all of the stuff is linked up with the Discord. So all the perks apply via no matter what way you are supporting, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, well, oh yeah, I almost forgot to say it is world download day. So definitely get your world download. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for supporting. I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I will see you in the next episode. Be sure to join the discord discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And also check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, where I do live stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, usually around the morning time, central standard time. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to check it out and I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Now, I know you guys wanted to see me use four shears on this pig. So. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. I, I gotta see my way out. <laughs>